so much. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm so glad um, to be with friends and uh, seeing some of them after a little bit of time. Um, so real quickly, um, I represent Council of People's Organization. It was formerly known as Council of Pakistan Organization. After 9-11, when people were being rounded up, I had a fabric store I was about to open up. Instead of a fabric store, it became an office, um, temporary office, where we were helping people get legal aid, free services, immigration, and one thing leads to another. This is all I've been doing for the past 16 years. I sold off all my businesses. This is all I do. Um, we started off with 1,000 square feet, um, volunteers. Right now, we have a 20,000 square foot office, 37 employees, and a queen site. We started with small programs. Um, now we are one of the leading organizations in Brooklyn, serving the largest amount of Muslims, Arab, South Asians, and proud to say Uzbekistanis. Um, our office speaks 12 different languages on staff, right at the front desk. We have uh, stationed um, five people. Amongst them, they speak almost 12 languages from Urdu, Hindi, Punjabi, Bengali, French, Creole, um, Spanish, Uzbekistan, Tajik, and two others I'm forgetting, <laughs> or a few more. But anyhow, so we started the first Halal Senior Center for Muslims. We started the first Senior Case Management for Muslims. Now, how did this start? It all started in Israel. There's a dear friend of mine, a brother of mine that I travel with, and he's sitting right here, and he was just honored, Rabbi Bob Kaplan. Rabbi, please get up for a second, two seconds. So this is, this is my bigger brother, my, my wonderful, wonderful, dearest, of dearest of brothers that I can tell you. Um, he and I travel together into different countries, building relationships. And because of the relationships we built here amongst the community after 9-11, we were requested to build relationships in different countries. On the State Department's dime, on the British government's dime, on even Russia's dime. Anyhow, um, because of that relationship, because of that understanding, Bob and I, you know, we always talk, and you know, Bob is in networks. And that's one of the reasons why we also started the first senior case management program. Bob introduced me to JASA. And I did a presentation. Um, her name was Leah Fester in her synagogue. And you know, I was just talking about Bob and our you know, travels and trips, and she's like, oh my god. You know? And I was like, you know, we have a lot of seniors that need help. That took four years from that conversation, from that time, to build up which is now the first time we are starting these programs. Then, we also had a further conversation, and I'm starting the first, I know you guys heard of Meals on Wheels. So we're starting the first Halal Meals on Wheels for the community. During that conversation, Bob mentioned to me, I have this wonderful friend of mine I ran into, his name is David, and Rabbi David. I said, okay, that's great. Well, would you be interested in this? I said, I think it's amazing providing free, interest-free loan to our community. And that's where this started. And people don't understand how it takes for someone to come together. You know, if you have it in your heart, doors will open up and someone lead you the way. And this is what Bob has been doing through David and David's been helping us now. And he's been explaining to us the step by step and what are the procedures and what, how do you do this? Because I have no idea. All I know is that as an immigrant, when we came here with my dad, my dad worked in a pizza shop, he saved his money, he lived in the pizza shop, he saved his rent, and he bought the pizza shop. Mm -hmm. Then he called my mother. My mother worked as a nurse, she came, she lived, she, then they opened up two pizza shops. Mm -hmm. They sold those pizza shops and they became the first owners of a grocery store where we are still in Brooklyn little Pakistan it's known as. So the way the immigrants work with loans, it's a pool of money everybody puts in. And everybody has different names in all the immigrant communities. And it is interest free, believe it or not. And I could not believe it because I was a young kid and I'm like, Dad, 
you know, how, what are you doing? It's like, yeah, every month, you know, I'm gonna put some money here, we'll put some money here, and it's a community that comes in together, these businesses, and they're helping each other. And that's how the businesses are run in immigrant communities, because they cannot get loans, because they cannot succeed. They don't have a bank. And I'm so glad you showed me that map, and I'm like, that's my neighborhood, and I don't see those branches. And you're absolutely right. Absolutely right, and they cannot get those help. They cannot get that assistance. This process, what David was explaining to me, and every time I think about it, I'm like, oh my God, David, that is amazing. You know, why aren't people knocking at your door all the time? And it is such a need within the community. That's why my board put side money, they're raising funds to start this program. Yeah, it is a beginning. But we're emphasized on how to help that community get out of that, uh, try to make ends meet. And one of the things that I always talk about is these mom and pop stores in all ethnic communities. It doesn't matter if it's in Harlem, it doesn't matter if it's in Chinatown, it doesn't matter if it's in, um, you know, the, in Staten Island. All these bodegas are the first social service agencies. I still remember my dad Every time he was on the register, somebody said, I didn't get my paycheck today. Can I get you the money at the end of the week? He just wrote their name. He said, no problem. People call it, oh, yeah, it's just credit. It's just credit. No, it's not that. It's actually he's providing a social service to that person right now. Many people came to my dad, and they asked, you know what? I'm looking for a job. Here's my number. Just let me know in case you find someone or anything. Other people came to my dad and said, oh, I'm looking for someone. And he made that connection for them. When people had issues in schools, he made those connections and assisted them, what they're supposed to do for your, their children. So these bodegas who are working hard, these immigrant ethnic enclaves, where their people are trying to, they're struggling, including in Harlem, including in all these, in Jackson Heights, I can tell you, or all over these places, they need that assistance. And these bodegas, I'm telling you, are giving them great assistance. People may not see it. You may not know, but they are giving them those assistance that is required. And if these ethnic communities are given the opportunity, yeah, take out a loan. You know, okay, so you just need what? Five thousand dollars to start what? A push cart? Pushing cart, selling donuts, coffee, make a living, instead of trying to be a day laborer, instead of trying to see whether or not I'm gonna get work today. Yeah, you're starting the empowerment. What, getting a cab? I don't even care if they drive an Uber. Doesn't matter. There were so many individuals who were not able to even do that because they don't have that financial sustainability or you know investment that someone would, is willing to make that in them. But this is what I'm seeing. And I'm sitting here talking to you. I used to service almost maybe a thousand people, maybe a thousand people a year. At the moment, I'm servicing 12,000 people walking through my door every year. 12,000 people. I sat there, I was like, oh my God, my database crashed. I mean, I was like, I don't know how to put in this data. We just invested about $35,000 into the new database because it's showing what's the need. Yeah, the number one, it is housing. It is economic well-being. I have so many people coming in for food stamp application, I can't even explain to you and it just went through the roof. I don't know if it's the administration, I don't know. People are afraid, people don't have jobs. All I'm hearing is, yeah, the economy is doing great. No, it's not doing great. Yeah. When a person cannot afford to purchase rice and beans, the economy is not doing great. I don't care what the stock market says. But this is where we're at. And these are the communities that we're seeing. And every time, I, I can't explain to you, as a business, so I used to own multiple businesses before I started this. I had a restaurant, I had a grocery store, 99 cent store, construction, and real estate. I know the value of cash that people spend in these businesses or in these stores or in rent because I'm able to use that cash value and purchase, when I go to my wholesaler, purchase a bo bottom line price for that pro uh, product and give it back to the community. Credit, all this other stuff when it goes through the banks and everything. There's so many issues 
Sometimes that happens. People are afraid. They are afraid. They don't know the system. They need to be taught. There are not enough banks in the neighborhood to teach them. In our English classes, we have financial literacy. We have Santander Bank doing sessions to explain to them it is a good thing. And that's what we've been doing. But building that relationship together, I don't want to reinvent the wheel. And David, Rabbi David, I mean, it's one of those wonderful things that he's able to do. Mo, here's the wheel. This is how it was made. I just need you to roll it. Thank you.